Trump 2016 campaign veteran and former Mueller grand jury witness, Sam Nunberg. Welcome back, sir. Thank you for having me, Ari. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, we got the news here that Mr. Packer faced the grand jury, something you and a small number of people have done, you in the federal context. Um, let's start mm -hmm. there. It's in the news. Uh, Donald Trump knew his way around New York media uh, of all kinds. And when you look at some of the headlines, we have some of these. Um, even before you get to what's under investigation in this case, uh, there were times where the Inquirer in February went at Bush when he was up, then went at Rubio, um, then went at Cruz. Um, talk about the Fox defamation case. That was widely attacked by Cruz as a lie. Um, did you ever witness or learn about the Inquirer um, kind of acting as a, a operator for Trump? Well, actually, since we're talking about it, I mean, the Mueller uh, grand jury and, and my voluntary interview, they specifically asked if I had ever dealt directly with the National Enquirer, to which I told them, no, I did not, that if you considered um, if you considered sort of media folks, let's say, uh, you know, each person in the office handles certain ones or deals with them, that that was Michael and that Michael had dealt with them for many, many years. Uh, I had told them that I had seen, I had heard or I had to wait outside when David Packer was meeting uh, with, with uh, then uh, Mr. Trump and Michael Cohn in his office. You know, I'd seen David in the office throughout, you know, 2013, 2014. Um, oh. And that was something that they brought back up into the grand jury. I, you know, and I personally considered it exculpatory because I figured at that time they were investigating the public reporting had come out about a Stormy Daniels uh, settlement. Uh, another issue that they were wondering uh, about was whether, uh, how concerned or why, what Donald's concerns were. That's what they asked me, pointedly. What would Donald's uh, concerns vis-a-vis uh, the election and what and what could come out. And I had said to them, all he ever said was that women could be a problem and that he could get in trouble upstairs. In other words, he would point upstairs because the office was on the 26th floor and he lived in the penthouse of Trump Tower. Uh, they, asked, they asked about that uh, multiple times. It came up in the grand jury testimony uh, multiple times. You know, they asked if I had ever heard of any issues those years and I said nothing nothing specific you know nothing specific in terms of names or anything like that but the one thing I can yeah, tell me, them let me slow you down yeah. you're because I think you're, you're bringing out important material that you share with them whatever one thinks of people's lives you're saying legally that would cut against Trump's criminal intent uh, if people telling the truth I assume you you tried to tell them the truth under oath there <laughs> I told them to, uh, right. uh, viewed it and, and contemporaneously as something that was not about the election. Uh, right. That it was uh, that this was something that was consistent throughout the years. I, wor I worked for him from 2011 to mid 2015. And, you know, there were there were. His marriage um, and uh, Melania in particular the state of the marriage and um, so that's so that's exactly what I what yeah. they wanted to know in terms right, of right, which again, and, uh, which could, again, that's part of the debate, but that's something his lawyers in all in all context mm -hmm. could bring out as as trying to be uh, a defense or a mitigation helpful to him. I want to play you a little bit of, of Michael Cohen, who you work with. You just brought him up as someone who dealt yeah. with the, the tabloids, um, because as you know, um, and as his, as the any Trump defense will point out. Uh, and one of the witnesses did last week. Cohen's said different things at different times. Take a look. I know Mr. Trump. I've stood by him shoulder to shoulder for the past decade. I'm obviously very loyal and very dedicated to Mr. Trump. I think yeah. he's a wonderful man. I think he's going to be an amazing president. Everyone is familiar with him saying quite the opposite now. The key question for you tonight, Sam, do you think Mr. Cohen is currently being truthful or not? I think that Michael is, well, the short answer is, uh, the short answer is it's, it's a little unclear to me and I'll tell, and I'll, let me explain. I'm not so sure Michael made that payment to Stormy, to Stormy Daniels, uh, but right before the election for the state of the election. 
Michael, in Michael's head, he may have thought that Donald was going to win, but I don't think a lot of people thought at that point. The polls certainly didn't show that. And uh, I thought that he was possibly going to use that payment as a way to get the position that he, that he wanted within the White House, which was uh, chief of staff. And so do I think he's being honest about how he was reimbursed? I think he's being completely honest about how he's reimbursed, and there's a paper trail. But do I think that Donald wanted to make that payment? No. I'd be surprised if Donald actually wanted, wanted yeah, to but put that, out the money himself. <laughs> that doesn't, yeah, but that won't, that won't help him as much. I think, I think there is a fair, right. uh, there's a fair debate about witness testimony, particularly when there's a history, and that's true in mafia cases, it's true in this one. Uh, with what matters to a jury, if there is a jury in panel, yeah. um, is whether they're telling the truth now, not whether they ever lie, uh, because you got a couple a couple liars running around. Now, I wanted to get something from you as well, which is mm -hmm. you went through your process. We interviewed you then. We've interviewed you since then on a range of topics from, from these cases to your own work in politics, which is how you ended up in the grand jury in the first place. Uh, but you've observed at times in general and specifically for Mr. Cohen um, that this all comes back to Trump and the way he works. Take a look. Whenever I hear from anybody else who calls me up and says, I've been screwed by Donald Trump, and there are a lot of people, Donald Trump, the, the personal guy, he screws everyone. I always say, you have nothing to complain about unless you're Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen got so screwed out. He's got screwed the most I've ever saw by anyone, by Donald Trump. Here we are, believe it or not, about five <laughs> right. years later, Mr. Nunberg. Um, is that still the case? Has anyone been screwed worse <laughs> uh, and a question I want you to answer, and then I actually have Joyce Vance uh, standing by, and she's going to join us on some of the law. Do you think any of these other people um, will ever change their tune because Donald Trump has somehow managed to keep people largely on board, even at their own personal mm -hmm. legal peril? I think Michael. I think Michael got a completely raw deal ultimately by by working for Donald. He worked for him for many many years. Donald did not give him a position in the White House that would have been. I don't think chief of staff would have been appropriate, but some kind of senior type of position. And he ultimately uh, ended up in jail. So, I, so from from my experience of anyone that I worked with, uh, worked with, and during that time, uh, Michael was certainly screwed over by Donald uh, very very badly. 